Good morning once again. Morning. Welcome to our service of worship on this 22nd day of January 2023. I know it's been a little bit gloomy outside, my friends, but in here, the light of Christ is shining. It is the third Sunday after the Epiphany. And I invite you all to stand as you are able as we begin this time of worship together. Our call to worship is printed in the bulletins. The people's response is in bold. The God of all creation makes us one in the flesh. Let, Let us, us join hearts heart and, and voices in praise. praise. In Jesus Christ, we are made one in the spirit. Let, Let us, us be united, united in truth, truth through the through same, the same one spirit. spirit. We practice our faith in many different ways. Yes, yes we, we confess, confess one Lord Christ Jesus. Jesus. We render different forms of ministry. Yes. Yes. Our calling is on Christ Rejoice, people of God. The risen Christ is among us, calling us together at his one table. Praise the Lord.
Before you are seated, uh, why don't you turn? Uh, I know that we do have uh, several visitors here. Uh, just turn and say good morning to uh, the folks around you. Good morning. Morning, morning. How are you? Good. Okay. That's it. And I invite you to uh, take your seats. Our prayer this morning speaks of the unity to which we as a body of Christ are called to live out. I invite you um, to take a deep breath and to consider deeply these words as we pray them out loud in one voice together. Let us pray. God of unity, we come before you dismayed at our own divisions. We have struggled as your church to live in but we are divided along the fault lines of our society. The ruptures in our families, among friends, among denominations, among nations are wide and deep. When we attempt to get on the same page, we build taller walls and dig deeper trenches. God help us. We know that Christ is not divided. We know that it is your baptism to which we have been called. It is your service to which we are compelled. You have called us to proclaim the gospel, but we even fight about what that is. Help us, God. Help us give up our power and our privileges. Help us to heal for the sake and cause of the cross of Jesus. Help us to want the unity you share, for you are one. In you there is no division. Help us to embrace and to live the foolishness of a life empty of power and given to service in the likeness of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us to walk in salvation in the name of the servant Christ. Amen. Will the children please come forward? Miss Jackie is here to share with you this morning. And I have stuff. I have stuff here. Okay, I need this space. So everybody sit all there. Sit around here. How are you this morning? Good. Okay. You'll all see. You'll all see. Do you remember what we talked about last week? Anybody remember? It's about Jesus and what was it? Well, when he was little, did we talk about what he played with, how, what, he, what he did? Remember we talked about he had probably had um, a, a wooden toy? Well, this week, we're going to talk about what did Jesus eat? Let's talk about that. When he was a baby, he was drinking goat's milk. Okay? And probably maybe sheep also. Sheep, goat. And um, his mother, when Mary, when he got a little bit, maybe about four months, five months, I'm sure she mashed some bread with a little oil and a little milk and gave that to him like it was cereal. They didn't have the foods that we have. But we're going to look at some of the foods they had. Okay, here we go. Let's see this. I know they ate a lot of bread. Lots of bread. So here we have some 
red here, and we have regular, this is a, this is called hala bread, and we have, um, oops, in the bottom, we'll just see, oh, we have flat bread, I'm going to open this so you can see it, and we have more flat bread, but this is like a matzo, okay, so, here we have a matzo, and we have, yep, we've got hala, and we have round bread, flat bread. Okay, now, guess what? I think we need to taste a little of this, so I'm going to give you each a little piece of the bread. Bread, they ate more bread. They ate more bread than anything. They also ate apricots, dried apricots, fresh ones too, but they dried them. They had no refrigerators. So they had apricots. And they had nuts, because they had trees. And they had, they also had, where are they? Oh, here they are. They had figs. Because I remember in the Bible it said Jesus was walking. He took a fig from the tree. So there's a lot of little pieces of figs here. And this is what a fig looks like when it's dry. And they're big and whole when, when they're big. Then they had seeds. And they had cheese cubes. They made cheese with the milk. And also Green grapes. they had grapes and they had olives, and they had raisins. Not like this, but they had raisins, because they had grapes. And they had fish, but it didn't come out of the, the um, Sea of Galilee like this. This is tuna. They didn't really see tuna. So let's look at some of the things they ate. <gasps> Here, pomegranate. And they ate olives. This is a branch of olives, and this is a honey. They had honey because they had bees and lots of olives. Then, when they did have, they had goat milk, but they did have quail, which is like a chicken. And guess what? Locust. Locust. Now it sounds awful. The locust is when it's cooked. It, they like it's good. I never tasted it, but I trust whatever people tell me. I don't think I'm going to taste it either. <laughs> and so there's a lot of other foods that he had. Vegetables, onions, and kale, and artichokes, and chickpeas, and pumpkins, and cucumbers. So let's try a little bit. Let's try a little bit of the cow. The mm. uh, you want to try a little bit? Try. Mm -hmm. You want to try a little? Yeah. How does that taste? Is it good? It probably tastes really good with jelly on it. Okay, there we go. This is very important to all our, our services because we share bread. And then we had, um, anybody want an apricot? They were okay. those made of. Apricots, they're dried apricots. See, they didn't have refrigerators. Oh. So they had to, um, yep. How about, how about, oh, the dates are very sweet. Dates. Dates, they're very sweet. Our figs, the figs are very sweet. If you want to try it, go ahead, try it. Go on, try it, tell me how you like it. Go ahead, okay, great. I know what you would like. Raisins. Of course, like I said, they didn't come that way. So I have raisins for all of you. And then we are going to... Wait, this actually tastes like raisins. Yes, but it's, it's... Oh yeah, we have grapes too. Do I have enough for everybody? Oh, you know what? I'm going to give you an extra. Here, anybody want to try a grape? Grab that grape. Here we go. Grape. Look at this. It's 
like we're here with the Bible on, and in the old, when Jesus, this is what Jesus ate. So we're eating the same foods that Jesus ate, with the exception of locusts. I couldn't find any locusts. Okay. <coughs> and we have these seeds, but this is, this is, have you, I'm sure you probably all tasted this bread. Okay, it's pretty good. Yeah, you want to taste one? Well, okay. Now we're going to go say a prayer, and you guys are going to go to Sunday school. And you had your breakfast. Oh, yes. Oh, I forgot that, too. We'll have that, and then we will say a prayer. I'm glad you said that. The cheese, and this is cheddar, and I, I know they made cheese. I don't know exactly how. Here, somebody, do you want one? Here you go. Great. Oh, don't, don't eat that one. Here you go, and here you go. There. Great. Okay. I think we're going to say a prayer. King Albert, dear God, please bless the food that we are eating and thank you for the bounty that we have in our homes and thank you for you loving us and we love you. Amen.
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. The epistle reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 10 to 18. You can find that in your pew Bible, page 166. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you should be in agreement and that there should be no divisions among you, but that you should be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus, but beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Please rise as you are able for the hearing of the gospel, which comes to us today from the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 through 23, which you can find on page 3 of your pew Bible. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the lake in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. So that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has gone. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. They were casting net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Amen.
eternal God, we are your people and we seek your light in our lives. Shine in our hearts in this darkness. Teach us your ways. Speak to us of your wisdom. Open our hearts to receive your instruction. Let the same mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus. May we continue to listen. May we continue to hear. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, almighty God. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our son returned home from college at Christmas break and announced to his father and me that in 2023 he would say yes to trying as many new foods as possible. No more picking through a salad trying to discern if he liked all of the ingredients. No more pushing aside the platter of roasted root vegetables or potatoes. He would be opening his mind to the possibility that what he thought he disliked might be limiting his choices, preventing him from fully experiencing the gift of food. And he stuck to his resolution, as far as I could tell anyway, enjoying many of the things that he'd shied away from in the past. I am proud of his newly acquired culinary sense of adventure, and I hope that it extends to every aspect of his unfolding adult life. I worry that over time, our sense of wonder at the expansiveness of the world in which we live begins to erode. Our choices narrow, and we form habits that favor the familiar over the unknown. The parochialism isn't just about the foods that we eat, but also the people we know the clothes we wear, the places that we shop, where we choose to live, even the shows we watch on TV. When was the last time you ventured out of your comfort zone to try something new, like a restaurant or a store? How many decades have elapsed since you rearranged the furniture in your living room? Can you conjure up a recent example of sharing a meal with someone who doesn't look like you? What is it about the unfamiliar that causes us to shrink back into our turtle shells? The world is resplendent with diversity, which is God's precious gift to all creation. We see this diversity reflected in the very first words of our Bible, in the book of Genesis. God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly across the dome of the sky. So God created the sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. 
So God created humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Man and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. In the beginning, God and God's creatures were harmonious. Our differences were meant to be a blessing. But over time, over generations of inching away from God's vision for the creation, and remaking it in our own, our differences became our focus, our problem. In his 2016 book entitled Tribe, Our Homecoming and Belonging, author Sebastian Younger explores the problem of modern American cultural division, which he links to rising cases of PTSD, anxiety, depression, even suicide. In the book, he asks Rachel Yehuda, professor of psychiatry and neuroscience, and an expert in post-traumatic stress disorder at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City, for her thoughts on the matter of our increasingly polarized society. And she responds in this way. She says, if you want to make society work, then you don't keep underscoring the places where you're different. You underscore your shared humanity. I'm appalled by how much people focus on differences. Why are you focusing on how different you are from one another? and not on the things that unite us. Why are we so focused on our differences rather that, than on that which unites us? It's no coincidence, I think, that the divisive nature of contemporary American society is echoed in the growing divisions we experience in the church. The church is an institution after all, and we are not immune to the strong national sentiment of distrust, if not outright hostility of all of our institutions. Schisms, fractures, and an erosion of trust in religious leadership have young people heading for the church exit doors in alarming numbers while we wring our hands and wonder whether contemporary worship songs or hip young pastors and pyrotechnic stages will lure them back. Here's a clue, they won't. Because at the core of the church's problem is the idea that we humans can fix that which is fundamentally broken, and we can't, at least we can't do it by ourselves. We can't because we are a part of the problem, perpetuating a divisive and harmful system that for far too long has strayed from the central tenet of our faith. Jesus Christ is Lord. Period. Jesus Christ is Savior. Period. Jesus Christ is the singular uniting presence in the church, in our lives, and in our world. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Christ, the favorite hymn extols, there is no east or west. 
In him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. In Jesus Christ, Paul writes, God is reconciling the world to God's self, not counting our sins against us. If this is true, and I believe it with all of my heart, then why on earth do we tolerate talk of division within the church? Why do we allow our differences to trump the gospel message of unity and love? Who in the church has the audacity to decide who should stay and who should go? Whose theology is best? Whose worship style is the most pleasing to God? Again, the Apostle Paul writes to the church of Corinth, a church torn asunder by division. I appeal to you, my siblings in the faith, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, that there can be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. The power of God's love for creation does not contract over time, but expands out into the far reaches of the universe. The power of Christ's gospel is without limit, encompassing every human being, for we are all fearfully and wonderfully made in God's limitless image. In this season of division, I urge you to open your minds to embrace the wonder that God has in store for you. And in this world of us versus them, I implore you to open your hearts to receive the Christ whose love transcends every difference and whose cross expunges every sin.
Van is ready. Van is ready and willing and able to do his part to receive your gifts this morning. Gifts that are given from your hearts because it is one way, one way, that we serve our God. I invite you to give generously as he comes forward to receive this morning's gift, knowing that the work of our hands collectively adds up to an enormous blessing, both on behalf of this church and on behalf of all of those who are in
what Jesus ate as a child. And now we venture forth into a time of remembrance when we recall what Jesus ate as an adult. The bread and the cup that he shared with his disciples is available to us even now in this very place. I invite you into this time of Holy Communion with thoughts, first of all, in the silence of our hearts as we consider the ways in which we are called to repent and the ways in which Christ heals the divisions even within our own hearts. Will you pray in silence? of the new covenant 
poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as together we proclaim the mystery of faith.
this holy mystery in which you have truly given yourself to us in the real presence of Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 